Hi, this is Maria Rieger, your resident Gemini with another Positive Parenting with Astrology video. Today we're talking about the top seven ways to connect with your Scorpio child. Before we start, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit that bell to get your notifications for your regular free Positive Parenting content. Okay, um, if you want to know how to connect best with your Scorpio child to build a stronger, positive, more peaceful and altogether easier parent-child relationship, these seven tips will go a long way to help you. So let me know in the comments what you think. And also, big question for you, let me know what you most want help with or what you most would like to know about your Scorpio child because these kids are not easy to read. Okay, Scorp, really quick, to sum up, it's a water sign and a fixed sign. So water sign means it's a feminine energy sign. Water signs are feminine energy signs. That means that Scorpio approaches the world from a place of intuition and emotion and feeling instead of logic and rationality. It's a fixed sign. So that means their uh, Scorpio people are concerned more with maintaining things so that they were the same as before and maintaining the stability of things. It's a sign that has a little more difficulty with change and transition than other signs, which is interesting because Pluto, one of the uh, the ruling planet of Scorpio, is a planet that is all about transformation, breaking down to transforming and almost being reborn. Okay, number one, give your Scorpio child privacy. This is a sign that is very secretive, very private, very naturally withdrawn. Also, Scorpio is very slow to trust. You may think that because you're the parent you automatically have the right to your child's trust. You don't. And children don't always automatically trust parents. And Scorpio children especially do not automatically trust parents. They're slow to trust you. You're going to have to earn that trust. So give them privacy. Let them be in their own inner world. Let them be by themselves if they want to be. Let them be alone with their thoughts if they want to be. Do not pressure them to be with other people. And do not pressure them to talk to you or to others if they're not ready to which brings us to our next point. Okay, number two, do not pressure your Scorpio child to talk to you or tell you things. If you, these children are already very withdrawn, so if you pressure them to talk too much and ask them a lot of repeated direct questions, they feel threatened, they feel pressured, they feel like they're being interrogated, and they're likely to sting you because they feel threatened. And I go over this in detail in my book on Scorpio children about the sting of the scorpion and what happens uh, to elicit that response from your Scorpio child, okay? So uh, they'll withdraw even further if they feel like you're pressuring them. They do not like that, and they become even more and more resistant to open up to you, okay? So and instead of trying to pressure them to talk to you or asking repeated direct questions, the way to get your Scorpio child to open up to you is in their own time, and that's necessary, you have to let them do it in their own time, is to spend lots of quality one-on-one -on -one time with them without any pressure to do anything, just enjoying each other's company, no obligations to accomplish anything, occupying the same space. And when they feel comfortable enough with you and when they trust you enough, they will naturally open up to you in their own time. This is a very powerful thing. I mention it a lot on this channel, this idea of spending this quality one-on-one -on -one time for, in a pressure-free way with your children without the, the obligation to do anything necessarily. This is very powerful because you're basically communicating to the child that you enjoy their company, that you just enjoy being in their presence. And all children want, they may not be able to articulate it, but they want their parents to enjoy their company. No child wants to feel like a burden to their parents. No child wants to feel like a list of endless chores that their parents have to take care of. Every child wishes that their parent really enjoys their company, their own company, and loves being with them. So this, you may think you're not doing anything, but just by occupying the same space, watching TV with your child, or the two of you sitting at a restaurant, each reading their own book, just being with each other, can actually go a long way. You may not think you're doing anything, but you are. You're building this relationship over a series of moments and days and months and years with your child. And that takes a long time. With Scorp, it takes a long time, but it's essential that you do that to get to this close relationship and to get to the point where they feel comfortable telling you almost anything. Okay. And they're willing to open up to you. Okay. Number three, 
Do not take things personally when they get upset with you or have these big dramatic emotional outbursts. These are children that have big emotions. They're always, it's like they're almost always feeling emotions. They need to feel this entire, entire range of human emotions, the entire human experience. They would rather feel negative emotions than feel nothing. And when they're kids, they have trouble controlling that because they're kids. They don't have the tools yet. And with Scorpio, they're feeling so many things that they often don't even understand what they're feeling. So one of your jobs with the Scorpio child, one of the most important jobs of the parent of a Scorpio child is to help the child identify, understand, and articulate what they're feeling so that they can feel in control of themselves so that they don't feel that their emotions totally control them, right? Because that, that can feel that way to a Scorpio, even Scorpio adults, that their emotions almost like take over and you want to give your child the tools to help manage their emotions in a healthy way. So remember that when they sting you, I talked about this earlier, the sting of the scorpion, it's because they are afraid of being hurt or they feel hurt. When the Scorpio says something to hurt your feelings, it's because they are hurting, emotionally hurting, their feelings are hurt. So instead of overreacting, like a lot of parents do, you want to remain calm and you know, calmly consider your child and what they're feeling and say to them, it looks like you know, it looks like you're angry or upset and I didn't mean to make you upset. Is there anything I can do? Or is there anything you like to talk about? And when the Scorpio sees that you treat them the same way, even after they, you know, dramatically overreact or they try to hurt your feelings, that your love for them does not change, that is extremely powerful. And that goes a long way toward building trust and this solid relationship with your Scorpio child. It is essential that you remain calm. If you have trouble doing it, we all do. We're human. Parents are not robots. I have trouble, you know, uh, calming my emotions. Sometimes you can go in another room. You can tell your child, I need a few minutes to myself. Hold on. You can take a few minutes. You can calm down. We've all had to do that. So whatever you have to do to remain calm. And I promise you over the course of days, months, years, when you remain calm with when your Scorpio child overreacts like that, they will eventually learn from your example and and stay calm or if they get upset they will calm down easily i've seen that with my son i've seen that with other scorpio children but it does take it takes a long time and it takes a, a very thick-skinned parent some of the time because a lot of the time because a scorpio child sometimes can say things to really they know how to dig in there it's 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 um it's uh it's really interesting my son told me once uh he said uh man uh, being a parent is easy you have such an easy life like and I was like, wow, if you only knew all the things I have to do throughout the day, right, to manage this household and help our family. But instead of, you know, getting upset, I told him, well, I'm sure it looks very easy to you, but I promise you it is not easy. <laughs> so it's essential that you remain calm. Okay. Um, number four, listen without interruption to when they talk and help them identify and articulate their feelings. All right, we mentioned this a little bit in the last point. Um, this is one of the most important things that the parent needs to do for the Scorpio child, help them work through their emotions, validate their emotions, tell them it's okay to feel that way, it's okay to feel angry, it's okay to feel however you're feeling. You work through it, you name the emotion, you identify the emotion and you let it go. And when you do that process repeatedly, it helps your Scorpio child to deal with their emotions in a healthy way, to acknowledge the emotions, not repress them. You don't want to suggest to a Scorpio child that they repress their emotions because they're already so withdrawn. They, but they have to deal with them in a healthy way, not repressing them and not you know having uh, recurrent, continual, dramatic emotional outbursts all the time. Obviously, you know as they get older, the kids can uh, control you know their temper and their feelings a little bit better, manage them a little bit better, and that's your role. One of your roles is to help them do that. Okay. Um, but yeah, so one technique that's really good to use with helping a Scorpio manage their emotions is the technique of mirroring. When they're talking and they feel upset, you know, they're upset or they say something that suggests they're angry. You help them by saying it sounds like what you're saying is you're angry about X, Y, Z. Did I understand that correctly? Yes, because X or one time I said to my son, he was angry about a bunch of stuff. And I said, I think what I'm hearing is that you are feeling a lot of frustration because you feel that you do not have a lot of control over your life and a lot of say over things that happens to you. And he says, yes, that's exactly right. It's exactly how I feel. Okay. I get that. You're a kid. You're 11 years old. That's kind of how it is. As you get older, you get to have more say, right? 
And as you become an adult and have your own place, you have, you know, say over your whole life. That's how it is, but it will not always be that way, right? And is there any way I can help you right now? So that technique of mirroring is to kind of mirror the responses back to them. It shows that you are listening, which is very important, that your kid wants to feel heard always, and that you are helping them verbalize and articulate their emotions, okay? And if you watch my video on how to parent a Scorpio child when you're a Gemini parent, which is my situation, that's probably the biggest way a Gemini parent can help a Scorpio child is by using precision of language to articulate emotions. Okay, number five, this is huge. I say this all the time, never lie to a Scorpio child. They will find out the truth. They always do. They have like a sixth sense for lying. They are the detectives of the Zodiac. They get to the bottom of things. They are relentless in their pursuit of knowledge or whatever they want. Never lie. If you don't know the answer, say, I don't know. Don't pretend that you know. There's no, there's, there's no shame in a parent saying, I don't know the answer. Doesn't give you less authority as a parent or make you a worse parent. You don't know, you don't know. I don't know, but we can find out. If you don't think they're ready to hear the entire answer, if they're not old enough to hear the entire answer, Give them an age appropriate answer. You can think of something. I've had, I've had to think of a lot of things uh, where I tell my son, I don't wanna tell him maybe every detail of a, of a response, but I'll give him the truth, but in an age appropriate way, right? So you wanna be careful about that. You never lie, never obscure the truth. Never say, I'm not gonna tell you. Tell, t say you don't know, give him an age appropriate answer. Because, you know, kids have so much access to information right now with the internet. If you don't tell them, they're going to go figure it out. They're going to go find, you know, ways to research it, talk to their friends, and they may get an answer that's not true or an answer that's not appropriate for their age. So never lie. This also goes to building the trust with them. If you lie to a Scorpio child repeatedly, they just won't trust you. And then that's the chance to have a really good parent relationship is kind of broken. Okay. Um, number six. This is a bit controversial. Uh, other parents <laughs> may not agree with me on this, um, but this is what I believe I'll tell you and I would be interested to hear your uh, views in the comments. Always believe your child over other people. So in any healthy relationship, you have to give trust to get trust in return until you have some proof or some reason not to trust. Okay. So imagine that, you know, you're in a relationship or a close friendship, close family relationship with another adult and the other adult always questions everything you say, like, Oh, I don't believe that happened or, well, I'm going to research that. I don't think that's true. Imagine how you would feel. How would you feel if that person who you are very close to one of the most important relationships of your life, does not believe anything you say, or doesn't trust anything you say, or always checks up on everything you tell them, you would feel pretty crappy. You would feel like that person didn't trust you. You would feel invalidated. You would feel gaslit. You would feel very bad. So imagine how your kid feels, would feel if you never believe what they told you. Now, young kids will, you know, exaggerate things, or I'm not talking about a toddler, you know, making up stories. And my son, he's 11. He'll say things like, we've been waiting for five hours, or I waited for five hours. And I'm like, and actually, it's been like 15 minutes. It hasn't been five hours because they, the concept of time is very different. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about um, if something happens at school and the teacher says they did X, a lot of parents I know always believe the teachers over the child, and I think that's wrong. Okay. My experience is that oftentimes the teachers don't have the whole story. There are always multiple sides to every story. And you know, solicit your child's story first before you accuse them of doing things. A lot of the times the teachers don't have the full story uh, and, you know, kids get in trouble for things that frankly, I think are stupid that they should not get in trouble for. So you can always, you can always uh, take your, you know, listen to your child's story and then you can always verify, right? Your child may not have the whole story, they may not have had all the information. They may have misheard things. It doesn't mean they intentionally lied to you. In my experience, when older children lie, it's to avoid punishment or to avoid 
the parents overreacting or avoid the parents lecturing. That's what I would lie as a kid to avoid these like unending lectures because I hated those. So you have to look at why they're lying. Okay. If the kids are lying um, about the teachers and the students, my experience is that, you know, my hat's off the teachers, but teachers are not concerned with making sure your kids are emotionally healthy, making sure your kids think independently and making sure your kids are free thinkers. They're mostly about, controlling classroom behavior in order to get through the material. So they reward abject obedience, okay? Over free thinking and over questioning. And I don't believe in that and I don't parent that way. So you have to be very careful when your children get in trouble or get written up for things at school. Do not, my, my belief is do not automatically believe the teachers over your child. Always believe your child. I always believe my kid and something interesting happened when I decided to always believe him. When he told me that X thing happened at school, that he got in trouble for, and I would talk to the teacher that his story would match the teacher story. And I would agree with my kid. I would say, I, I don't think he should get in trouble for this. I think this is dumb. Right. And my kid told me recently, actually, you know, mom, the teachers at school don't like you. I'm like, well, that's fine. <laughs> I don't need them to like me because I'm not about having the teacher's backs at the end of the day. I'm not gonna do anything to, uh, you know, uh, prevent them from doing their job, but I'm there, I have my kids back over the teachers. That's what I believe. Because as I tell my, my son, who are the two people that should have the child's back always? That should go to bat for the child always, the parents. And if it's not the parents, if they're not batting for the child, if they're not, protecting the child's best interest, who's going to do that, right? So that's my opinion on that. Um, it is your job, not the teachers, it is your job to raise emotionally healthy children who stand up for themselves, who impose their own boundaries, right? Who don't let other people walk all over them. That is your job. It's not the teacher's job. I'm not suggesting it is. But you got to understand, in a classroom of 20, 30 kids, sometimes not that many, but still, their, their goal is to control classroom behavior to get through the material, right? So be very careful about believing what the teachers say over your child. I always believe my kid. Anyway, that's, that's that. Um, I'd be interested to hear what you think about that. Okay, number seven, this is the last one, very important. Apologize. When necessary and appropriate, always apologize to your Scorpio child. Some parents think, but it somehow diminishes their parental authority when they apologize to a child or it makes them seem imperfect. It doesn't. I mean, yeah, it makes you seem imperfect in a sense, but none of us are perfect, right? So it's important that you apologize when you mess up. Scorpio children innately understand when you mess up. They innately understand emotional pain. They innately understand negative feelings. They innately understand mental suffering. They just do. <clears throat> so when you sincerely apologize to them, they really appreciate that, that you are admitting that you are not perfect, that you messed up. Okay. It is huge. Uh, they spend a large part of their lives dealing with negative emotions. So they get it. Okay. They totally get that you that you messed up, that you did something you should have done. And they more than likely 99.99999% of the time, they will forgive you. Okay, it will forgive you because Scorpios bond very closely with their parents and they need to forgive their parents to maintain the bond. Okay, so a sincere, heartfelt apology to your Scorpio child goes a long way toward building and strengthening that parent child relationship. All right, so those are the big seven ways I recommend to can best connect with your Scorpio child. Uh, again, you can leave me any comments uh, below. And next, I recommend that you watch, if you haven't already, my video on how to parent Scorpio children. And I have a separate video on how to parent Scorpio moon children specifically. Scorpio moon children are even more withdrawn and secretive than Scorpio sun children. And if you're interested, my book on Scorpio children is available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. And you can get the first couple of chapters for free by clicking the link in the video description. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.